we're not seeing any action yet as far as um, you know them pulling the trigger on big landscape scale firing operations. One of the things that happens with firing operations is oftentimes we don't, when we say we have to have a good window for firing, oftentimes we can't get stuff to burn well enough, right? So we could think like, okay, well, we just got a bunch of rain and so fuels are moist, so that might be a good time to go fire off this slope because it's not going to be too intense. Well, the problem is we can't get it to burn, right? Like a bunch of wet grass and ferns. We we could go out here with a blowtorch today, right now, this morning with the humidity at 99%. We could pour 10,000 gallons of diesel on this slope. And once that fuel burned off, it, this would just go up, it'd go out. And so oftentimes, you know, that's, that's one of the kind of ironies of large scale firefighting is that oftentimes we can't get our firing operations to carry until the conditions are such that we can't control them. Right. So, so it's a, it's a, it's a tough puzzle. You know, you, you want to put fire on the ground and, and, you know, we need to fire over here to, um, secure this edge. But right now, this morning, you go out there and fire, you probably wouldn't get it to carry at all. It'd probably just go out. And so, uh, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to wait and do it at four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, when it's windy? Cause that might be the only time you could actually get it to, to carry. Right. But then if you do that and you lose it, then people are like, man, what are they doing firing in the heat of the afternoon? It's like, well, it's probably the only time, you know, we've got this funny window here where the fire is only really active for like, you know, four or five hours a day. And so, you know, sun goes down and your firing operation gets really hard to carry sometimes. So, you know, we saw that last year on the mosquito was the fire moved into a, like a seven year old, eight year old burn that was full of green ceanothus. And they just, and it was under a heavy inversion. They just couldn't get it to burn. And the same in the Dixie fire when the fire was burning up by um, the Hat Creek Rim in an other recent burn, they just, the firing operations, it can be really hard to get, you know, eight year old green brush to burn until the wind's blowing and it's dry and hot. So when I say that, you know, firing is one of the main tools we have to contain these large fires, it's hard to find the window where you can put fire on the ground, get it to carry, get it to consume as well as you want. Because if you just put a bunch of fire on the ground and you get it kind of black, then it's, when the wind starts blowing and it gets dry again, and then it just, then it can burn again, right? So like on the Dixie fire, we fired, uh, not me, but the organization, uh, firefighters, fired Humboldt Road. And it was this nice thin kind of white fir forest fuel breaks really kind of textbook this is what a fuel break should look like but we had this heavy inversion almost rain basically cool temperatures uh, they ran around they they fired that whole road system probably 20 miles of firing but it didn't burn black enough and then um, when the inversion lifted a week later um, fires deeper in just spotted over all over the place there so Burning out's difficult, and oftentimes you just don't get the window, and then the lid comes off the pot, the fire spices up, it comes running out of here, and you just didn't get the opportunity. 